Okay, I think we're gonna get started. And I'll just start by going through the Stampin' Up! supplies that you need to make this adorable little treat box. All right, first is the Spooky Cat stamp set. And I am using the Pick a Pumpkin stamp set here for this fun little jack-o'-lantern face. Um, I have to say that with this particular greeting, if I had it, I would have used um, this little guy right here, this, the little thing stamp set, because look at that fun little spider. I would have totally used that one instead of the pumpkin face, but I don't have this guy yet. All right, so we're going to use a little jack-o'-lantern face from Pick a Pumpkin. I'm using my seasonal tag framelits dies for this little piece of spider web here. I just love that little die. And my favorite new die right now, this bouquet bunch framelits, has this adorable little tag die in it. I'm using two Stampin' Up! punches today. I'm using my Everyday Label punch and my scallop tag topper punch. I've got a couple of different Stampin' Up! trims. We're using the Fresh Fig Finely Woven Ribbon and the black, basic black mini sequin trim. I love that for a little sparkle. And the solid basic black baker's twine. All right, the measurements and the scoring and the diagram will all be in the project sheet that'll be on the blog later today. I will um, put this video up archived on YouTube and on kitchentablestamper.com so you don't have to worry about writing down the measurements or the supply list right now. Um, I've got my ribbons and trims already cut. And then let's see here, my measurements are um, I've got some window sheet here, and it is one and three quarters by nine and a half. I've got some spooky night designer series paper. I'm going to use the stripe side. This is, uh, let's see here. I have to look at my notes. Hmm. Haha, -ha, found it. One and a half by five. I've got a scrap of very vanilla cardstock for my label here. This is one and three quarters by four. And then I've got a piece of basic black cardstock that is three and a half by two and three quarters. And then I did my die cutting already, so you don't have to see that. Hey Pam, I'm glad you're here. This is what we're making today. I was just going through the Stampin' Up! supplies, but there will be a project sheet on the blog for you to print off with the measurements and supplies listed if you want to do it. I found these fun little old-fashioned candy sticks on Amazon. They're sh little short ones, and they taste like orange cream. They're so good. But look at what a cute treat they make. Isn't that adorable? Hey, thanks for the thumbs up. I love seeing those float by. All right, so we've gone through our pieces and our measurements. Let's score up the pieces that need to be scored. So we need to score our um, clear cardstock, our designer series paper and our basic black. I'm going to clear this away and get my Simply Score tool in here. Are you guys going to make Halloween treats? Let me know. Write a comment. Tell me if you're making Halloween treats, who you're making them for. That would be awesome to know. I hope this is inspiring for you and relevant. All right, so I've got my Simply Score in here. And let's get this back in here for anybody who joins us so they see what we're making. And let's start with the um, window sheet. So we're going to score this one at four and a half and five, and you want to score this nice and deep, four and a half and five. Hey Robin, I'm glad you could make it in. All right, now our belly band is one and a half by five, and we're going to score this one at one and a quarter, at one and three quarters. The measurements will be on the blog, don't worry, three and a half and four. And while we're scoring, we're going to score this piece of basic black, too. And the basic black gets scored on the two and three quarters side, half an inch on either side here. So you're going to do it hot dog ways, half an inch. So what does that work out to be? One half and two and a quarter. And then rotate, and you're going to do one and a half and two. Okay. 
That's our scoring. Let's move this out of the way. It's big. And I've got my paper snips. What we're going to do here is we're going to um, cut the shape of our box before we add the wood grain texture to it. That way we don't lose our score lines. So you're just going to snip out kind of at an angle both of these little score lines here. Oh my goodness, Pam, you're asking about the acetate boxes in the holiday catalog. I have to say, I love the acetate boxes too, but I've been doing paper crafting as a business for a very long time. And about eight years ago, um, before my son was born, I did craft fairs. And so I have bunches and bunches of acetate boxes from when I used to do craft fairs and do sets of cards. So I have tons of them and I have tons of ideas, but I don't have any of the Stampin' Up! acetate boxes. Isn't that crazy? It's just when you, everything comes back around again. It's like your closet, you know? If you leave something in there long enough, it's back in style again. That's my craft closet. So I could definitely do some things with the card boxes. But thanks for asking. It's a good idea. Um, I also decided to go back to craft fairs. I haven't done any since my son was born. And um, I'll be doing some craft fairs. So all the things that I do in preparation for my craft fairs, I will be um, sharing blog posts and project sheets and tutorial videos as I prepare for the for the um, craft fairs. Okay, so I've got my wood planks embossing folder here and that little piece that we scored up to make our box. And I'm just gonna work the folds so that they're easier to find after we emboss. And then I want the wood grain to run up and down on my little box here. So I'm gonna set my paper in there and run this through. No thin die adapter one cutting pad and I'm going to run it back and forth because I want a nice deep impression. Okay. Alright, so there's our little wood grain box. Let's start putting this little guy together. This is what we're making. If you're just joining us, we're going to do this fun little treat box with a little old-fashioned candy sticks in it. And I need a bone folder now. All right, so we've done all of our scoring. Let's work all of our scores and put this little box together. I do love those acetate card boxes in the catalog. Back to that for a minute because um, they did one, and I don't know if it was in the catalog sample or if it was in the Stampin' Up! website where they filled them with different color holiday um, candies, and it was so beautiful. They just kind of stacked them up. So that's... It's kind of all in what you fill those acetate boxes with. All right, now, while we're working our scores, let's grab the belly band here and work those. Oh, it's getting away. That's what we're making. See, there's a couple of new viewers. So are you guys making Halloween treats? Anybody else making... Lots of stuff for the classroom or for trick-or-treaters, nieces, nephews. Who do you craft for Halloween for? Okay, now the window sheet here is a little bit harder to find the score line, so I like to just kind of work it slowly. And then once I've got it, I'll crease it in, kind of bend it, and then work it with the bone folder so that it really ends up creased hard but in the right place. Okay, now I'm going to grab my scallop topper. You make 45 for your neighborhood Halloween event. Awesome. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of work. Is it for kids or adults, Robin, that you make the 45 treats for? Or a combination of both? All right, so I just lined this up and kind of centered it. The scallop tag topper does it two inches so you really have to look from the back and see that you've got your scallop even and then you want to close it but when you punch upside down remember to keep your hands out away from the punch so you don't punch your hands and this cuts our little scallop tag topper and acetate 
Yeah, that's what I'm doing for too, Pam. I'm doing the kids in school for the class Halloween party. I like to um, hit all the kids with really cute stuff and then usually make extras for the room moms and the teachers too. I love the Halloween party. Okay, so now I've got my tear and tape here and we're gonna start assembling. We're gonna put tear and tape across the bottom of our window sheet. And now our belly band, one of the tabs is longer than the other, so we're gonna take that longer tab and we're gonna put a strip of tear and tape across the back, so whichever pattern you want inside, okay? And then we're going to, on our little box here, we're gonna go down the inside of the back tabs with the tear and tape, both sides of the back tab, or actually this will end up being the front tab because it'll wrap to the back, so the back will have the seam. And then we want to fold in the small tab and put the tiniest bit of adhesive on each of these tabs, but they're folded in. See how that works? Okay, so now assembling this little box is easy. We're going to remove the adhesive liner on the small tabs first. And then we'll build up the back of the box here by adhering the sides to those bottom tabs. Then remove the liner here and we'll close up the little box. Now you'll see we're going to wrap this around from the front to the back and now this is the back of our box where the seam comes together. We want to keep that in mind when we're doing the belly band because we want the belly band to have the seam in the back also. So there's our little, our little tray, our little candy box. I got them on Amazon, Robin, and I'll put the link to them. I'll go back in my Amazon account and find the link directly to them so that you can see. But they're, they came in Amazon and I think I'll get the box in just a minute and tell you how many came in the box but really cute little candy. All right, so I just peeled the release paper from there and we're going to get our bone folder and really make this adhesive stick. So there's the base of our box. Now we'll take our little candies. You knew it. The Amazon thing, is that what you knew? I love it because, you know, I could go to the Dollar Tree all day long and I can buy stuff at the Dollar Tree and then I can be like, hey guys, yeah, go to the Dollar Tree and see if you can find it there or I can go to Tuesday Morning or TJ Maxx or, you know, but then it's all hit or miss for you guys where with Amazon I can just give you a link and then you are happy because you can make what I showed you. All right, so there's our little candies in there. Now our belly band, we're going to peel the adhesive and I don't know if you noticed while I was doing it these candies even have a front and a back too see they've got this little like textured fold on the back so you want to put those all facing toward the back and then from the front you're going to add your little belly band and adhere it so that the seam is up the back so everything is cohesive the back of the candy the back of the box the back of the belly band is all facing the back now We've got our fresh fig finely woven ribbon here, and I'm gonna go through this tag topper and tie it up. And now here's a little trick. Before you tie your bow, so just got not leave, leave it open, take this little tag, and I've got my stamp somewhere, here it is. Might as well do all of our stamping, right? So just set this aside for a minute. All right. I've got ink pads, pumpkin pie, and basic black. And we need the vanilla and this little tag. I love Halloween. Oh my gosh, black and orange just makes me happy. I love to craft for Halloween too. Okay. So I've got a little jack-o'-lantern face, and that's from Pick a Pumpkin. I said earlier that if I had a spider stamp, and there are some good ones in the holiday catalog, I just don't have them, I'd probably do a spider here, since there's a spider web on our label. But I got the jack-o'-lantern face, and it's cute. Um, then I've got a Wicked Yummy Treat for You from Spooky Cat. And we're stamping that with basic black on very vanilla. And then I've got Trick or Treat from Spooky Cat, and we're going to stamp that one with pumpkin pie. 
I just love the way this looks when it's all stamped. It looks so professional, so printed, you know? All right, then everyday label punch while we're here. Let's punch this guy out. Hmm, can't decide if I should look under the phone or through the phone. Facebook Live is always fun to try to line that up. Is that straight, you guys? I don't know. All right, through the phone. I think it looks good. All right, there we go. Cute. I am in love, if I do say so myself. All right, let me move the ink pads before I put my project in it. And we'll finish up assembling here. It's another quick little Friday project, isn't it? I hope you feel inspired to get crafting. All right, here's the one we're working on. Here's what we're making in case you're just joining us now. So my woven ribbon is wide open. And what we're going to do is lay the trim in here. And we're going to get a little, hmm, I want my multi-purpose liquid glue. Of course, it's at the bottom of the bucket. All right. So on this little spider web, just at the tip there, the tiniest little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue, I'm kind of a control freak. I want it to stay in place. So I'm just going to glue it to the back of my little pumpkin tag. Ha, ah, thanks, I see some thumbs up and some hearts. Thanks guys. You know how to make a girl smile. All right, the spider web, good question Pam. The spider web is from Seasonal Tags Framelits. I love the accessories pieces in this die set. There's a little spider web that comes in that one. All right, so this is always the fun part to try to do on Facebook Live too. I'm going to thread the solid baker's twine through the tag. I'm probably gonna shred it because I'm trying to do it through the phone. Hmm. Maybe one day I'll do cooking show style where I've already got them threaded. And I just say, thread it like this. And then I bring the one that's already threaded into the view. <laughs> Pam, you're welcome. Just doing my job. <laughs> One more you have to buy. I really like those little um, seasonal chums, the little tag uh, stamp set, but the accessory pieces in the set and the die set are really awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just lay everything over the fresh fig. See, we've got two tails up, two tails down. And then I'm going to tie my fresh fig bow, which is going to just secure all those other little trims in there. And so you notice I fold and then go over the top of the bow. That way your loops will be up and your tail will be down. And there you'll get a perfect bow every time. If it's a little big, hold the knot and pull the tails. And there it is. So there's your little um, trim pieces. Now. This one, you're gonna just pull down and let it dangle. And these, you're gonna secure with a bow over the top. See, clear as mud? I hope so. So you got your two little bows. Now we're gonna trim all of the ends of our different fibers here. And we'll be all set. All right, snips. So this one's a little long. These are a little ragged. And these I want to really kind of hang down so that you see the black and the sparkle with the orange candy. So let's get that underneath my spider web. There we go. How cute is that if I do say so myself? I really thrilled myself this time, guys. All right, so last step here, we've got that beautiful uh, little label that we stamped up and I've got a couple of mini dimensionals. I'm going to just put kind of across the bottom half here so that it only glues down to the belly band. I don't want it to attach to my packaging because I want this to actually slide so you can get in and get the candies. Hey, thanks Robin. I thought it was pretty cute myself. This one just, 
I don't know. It was one of those ideas that was percolating in my head. I bought the candy as soon as I saw it on Amazon. I'm like, oh, that is so cute and so unique. And um, I've just been letting it simmer for a while. And there they are. Oh my goodness. I am so thrilled. I thrill myself. Wow. All right, so there they are. If you've got any questions about the project, you can email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Take a look at the video on Facebook or on the blog. I'll have the source for the candy in case anybody's interested in it. And um, on the blog, I'll make a link so that you can get the project sheet with all the measurements if you like. So, oh, thanks for all the little hearts and the thumbs up. You guys know how to make a girl smile. Does anybody have any questions about it? What do you guys think? Are you going to go try and make some? I hope so. I think this is one of my favorite projects so far of the holiday crafting season. As soon as I get the video posted, I'm going to go and see if I can find some red and white candy sticks so I can do some Christmas version of this. All right, you guys. I'm going to let you get back to your lunch hours and your lives, and I'll catch you next Friday at noon. I'm going to try Friday at noon for a while and uh, see what we can do. You need to find treats, huh, Pam? Well, I got these on Amazon. I can give you a link to the candies. I also did. Did you guys see my brooms? Oh, my goodness. And the kettles? I found the greatest stuff on Amazon this year. All right. I'll get a project sheet together and archive the video on YouTube and the blog. If you've got questions, email me, marissa, kitchentablestamper.com. Thanks.